back to Angie Seems and Pockets, and today I'll be kind of taking you guys on a process of me creating something completely from scratch. I don't know how this video is going to turn out. I have this idea in my head that I'll talk about in just a moment, but outside of this idea being sketched out on a piece of paper, I have no other clue of what I'm doing. So yeah, you guys are going to experience my kind of brain thinking process when I create things from scratch as we go along. And I hope it turns out well. I guess we'll have to wait and see. I've seen people make these collars that are made out of leather and they kind of look like shirt collars but they're a necklace and I'm absolutely in love with them. However, I've never seen one made with a sun and moon design on the collar pieces. So I really wanted to try and explore that. I have a couple other color ideas that I've kind of been brewing in my head but this one seems to be out of all the other ones that I kind of want to make, this one seems to be the most simplest. So if I can achieve this, then I can definitely hope to achieve the other designs that I have in mind. I already designed the embroidery files off camera. We have an embroidery digitizing program at my uh, current job and I ended up playing with it a little. I do some digitizing for the work I do. So after my shift, I ended up staying a little later and digitize some stuff for myself. This way I have an original embroidery design that I can stitch on the collar and so that it looks exactly how I want it to look. Anyway, it's a little hard to explain exactly what I'm thinking. So. Let's stop wasting time and just hop right into it. First of all, let's take a look at my concept art here. So I am planning to do the necklace with an adjustable chain in the back. I also want the moon to be on the right side of the necklace, the sun to be on the left, the necklace to be made out of black leather with both gold and silver options for the necklace. So let's see how well I can execute this concept. To start off, I'll need to gather my materials. I'll be using this black faux leather. It's the same exact fabric that I used to make my 20-sided dice bag. I have my embroidery hoop, felted embroidery stabilizer, I have water soluble stabilizer, gold and silver embroidery thread, and of course a sharp pair of scissors. So with my materials gathered, I think we should start figuring out how we're going to make this happen. So I've already designed the embroidery stitch out here. I did this actually on a scrap piece of muslin um, to make sure that the stitch out came out the exact size and the shapes that I wanted it to. And then since this looked really great, I went ahead and did a couple tests on the leather that I'll be using. That way I could see what the colors look like on the black. Although I really like the gold, I think today I'll be working on the silver and then I'll make the gold off camera at some point because I really do like both colors. It's just I have to stick with one for today and I'll be going with the silver because it's a little brighter and it'll probably appear better on camera. So since all of the digitizing has already been done and I have figured out exactly the colors I want to work with, I'm going to get started with patterning out the necklace. So I pulled out my curved ruler because I feel like this will come very in handy to draw out the curve that I have here in the concept. I also know that my neck is 14 inches, so I'll have to make sure that the side is at a minimum of 7 inches. I'm probably going to do 7 and a quarter just to be safe because I don't want to be choking myself with this. So using this ruler, I'm actually going to use the curve that is included in here. I feel like this will be a perfect curve for the necklace. I'm actually going to pull the uh, ruler forward just a little bit to give myself more space. And I'm going to mark the zero. We agreed to 7 and a quarter, so I'm going to go up here and I'm going to mark out 7 and a quarter and then trace this curve. So I want my collar to be sharp down here, so I'm not gonna be using the ruler for that. I'll be using this other one to mark that out, and it will be a little bit at an angle. Um, with processes like this, I don't exactly always know ex what I'm doing right away because everything is just kind of, you know, figure out as I go. So I just kind of jot things down and then hope for the best. It's kind of my go-to process in a lot of this. So with the sketch kind of roughed out, I'm going to cut it out and I'm going to put it against my mannequin to see how it looks. Alright, so I have my mannequin here. I'm going to go ahead and take my pattern and just kind of lay it out. And I'm also going to just lightly pin corners to the mannequin so I can see it better without holding it. So this is one side of the collar and then the other side would obviously mimic this. And then if I turn it around, this is what it would look like in the back. So I'm hoping to have a closure here and some chain so that way the opening of the collar can be adjustable if needed. So I think that looks great for a first attempt. I'm actually very impressed. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off 
and I'll be using this for my pattern. So now that I have my pattern figured out, the next step is to figure out the exact placement of the embroidery designs. And so instead of actually cutting out the collar piece right away because I'm gonna be embroidering, I'm gonna actually measure out um, some fabric that will fit both the collar and the area in which I'll be embroidering. So that'll be kind of like that. And then I'll be cutting out the collar after I embroider um, the design onto the fabric. I don't know if you can really see that on camera, but I'm just kind of doing a large rectangle just very crudely. So I made a hole in the pattern of where I kind of want the embroidery to fall. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that out and then the direction of which the design's gonna be, which means it'll be centered on this point here. It's a little hard to see exactly the marks I'm doing, but basically this is where the embroidery is gonna start and then this is the um, horizontal line that I'm gonna follow to make sure that it's centered. Um, and then the collar is gonna be cut out from the piece approximately like this. I'm gonna go ahead and do another piece exactly like this. So now that I have the two pieces um, marked, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble them on my embroidery hoop. First step to make sure that the embroidery hoop is loosened. I just realized I marked on the back of this. I'm gonna quickly transfer the marks. Now that I transfer the marks over to the front of it, I'm gonna put down my stabilizer, the fabric with the mark kind of towards the center, and then over top of it, I'm gonna have my water soluble stabilizer. So now that I'm finished fighting with the embroidery hoop and I have it all on, I'm gonna use my guide here to make sure it's even on both sides. So the straight across line I made, and it looks like it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in my embroidery machine. Before I start embroidering, I'm gonna quickly change my thread to silver. I'm gonna put my embroidery hoop in here, pop it in go into my files and I have a USB down here. Um, I have the moon that I digitized. I'm gonna press set and then I'm gonna align the needle to the mark that I have on the fabric here. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna put my foot down and press embroidery. Let's get started. And with that, our moon is done. Time to do the sun. And now that my sun is also done, I'm gonna go ahead and change my camera back to my work table and we'll clean this mess up. So I'm gonna tear off the water soluble and pick it from the inside. The moon doesn't need any embroidery cleaning because it was all done in one go, but because the sun has the spokes, I'll need to clean them up. So I'm just gonna go in with my embroidery scissors and just snip them all off. Now that the embroidery is cleaned up, it's time to flip it to the back and trim down the stabilizer. So now that my embroidery is ready, it's time to take my pattern piece and cut out the pieces. So I'm going to start off with the moon. And so I want my moon to face inwards, so I'm going to make sure to line up my collar facing in. I'm going to go ahead and put this down where it was, line up the mark with the chalk marks. It's a little hard to see on camera, but if I like shift it, maybe you'll see. There's the chalk mark here. So I'm just going to line it up, hold it still, and I'm just going to trace around with my chalk. Uh, pencil. There we go. I'm gonna do the same thing but um, flipped so that way the sun is going the other way and with that I'm ready to cut them out. Now I'm gonna line them up make sure they're even trim up any areas where it isn't. Because I don't like how ugly they look underneath, I'm actually gonna line these. So what I'm gonna do instead of lining this traditionally is I'm just gonna flat line it and I'm gonna use a knit fabric because knit fabric doesn't um, fray. So to attach the collar to the knit fabric, I'm just gonna glue it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some tacky glue and apply it all over the collar pieces. And with the glue applied, I'm gonna go ahead and stick it onto my lining fabric. Now I'll apply glue on the other piece. And I also made a mistake here. Um, when I was using the chalk, I kind of, when I was wiping it away, I spread it out a little, and so now there's a bit of a greenish spot here. Um, off camera, I'm gonna try to remove it, but if not, I guess this is a good lesson to know for next time, um, that maybe I should be using a different marking tool other than my chalk pencil. But other than that, I just need to wait for the collar pieces to dry, and then I'll cut them out. 
Just if you're curious, my plan to leave a little bit of here with the stretchy fabric did not work at all. So I went ahead and reinforced it with some ribbon and more glue. So I'm gonna leave that to dry for a little bit. So now that my collar pieces are attached together very securely and the glue is dry, it's time to turn this collar into a necklace. I'll do that by using some grommets, lobster claws, jump rings, and of course, some chain. I accidentally forgot to turn on my camera, but I just uh, finished attaching the grommet, so I'm gonna show you what I did on the other side. So I made the hole a little bigger, forced my grommet through, and now that my grommet is stuck in, I'm gonna go ahead and take these grommet pliers and secure it. And now with both grommets on, I'm ready to put on the rest. So I have two jump rings here. I'm gonna open them up. I'm gonna attach the smaller one on this side. And then to the smaller ring, I'm gonna attach the lobster claw. And on the other side, I'm gonna attach uh, the jump ring with a little bit of excess, um, just in case I need to adjust the necklace a little larger. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this apart here. And with that, the necklace is done, and it's time to try it on. satisfied with the first pass of the design. There's of course a couple things that I would love to change um, if I was to recreate this or moving forward if I decide I want to sell this. First of all, we gotta fix the spoon. Like, it is skewed. I don't like it. Same with the sun. I kind of want it to go up and down so that would be the first thing I'd fix. Next, instead of using the tacky glue that I was using to glue the, the lining and the leather pieces down, um, I want to actually go out and get some actual fabric glue. Also, no more using chalk. The chalk just like, um, it's a little hard to see on camera, but in person it stained some of the leather pieces and it makes it have like this little bit of like a greenish sheen, which I do not love at all. But overall, for a first attempt, I think this looks pretty great and I'm excited to keep playing with this design and also doing other maybe embroidery elements or adding different types of fabrics or textures to the collar. I guess you might be seeing some more of this. Uh, I have a lot of different ideas. I can't wait to execute them all. But first things first, I'll have to fix this one. Thank you guys so much for joining me in my design process. I hope you maybe learned something. I hope you enjoyed it for entertainment. Whatever reason it is that you stayed this far, I thank you for it. And with that, thank you lovelies so much for watching and I'll see all of you in my next video.